This is by far one of my most favorite reactors and we're talking about the Fluid Catalytic Cracking Unit or for short FCC or FCCU if you're talking about the unit. But overall, if you're going to be working in oil and gas, this is one of the most common type of units that you are going to encounter. It's, this is relatively new process since it has been used maybe in the latest 40 to 50 years. And when I say this is because prior to that, you could simply get rid of the bottoms materials or the heavy cuts. But right now, you don't have that luxury. You need to ensure to recover fuels from those heavy cuts. Now, let's get started. So here is a diagram and before we even continue I want to show you a little bit more on the process. So we have the reactor, the regenerator, the riser and yeah essentially the most important part right here will be of course the products that go to later on to fractionation meaning that we are going to recover a lot of type of products. We're going to have natural gases but more importantly we're going to have gasolines, diesels and so on. And the part right here that I want to show you, this is by definition a catalytic reactor because we have a catalyst. Not only that, we have a fluidization system and we're gonna have a regenerator to ensure that we are recovering the catalyst. So these are the main components. The FCC unit is a type of catalytic converted used in petroleum refineries. One of the most important units because it really recovers a very high amount of fuels from a very heavy cut, which back in the day wasn't appreciated that much. But right now, if you do not have a FCC unit, you are most likely going to lose some money. It's used to convert high boiling point, high molecular weight hydrocarbons fractions of petroleum crude oils, essentially heavy cuts, to more valuable products such as gasoline, olefinic gases, and other products. It is technically speaking a mild to severe cracking of molecules. Later on, if you take some courses on cracking or on petroleum refining, you're going to see that we have light, mild, severe, and heavy crackings. This is another diagram on the process we have right here. The outlet of products is here. The inlet of the heavy residue goes here. So this is the feedstock. As you can see, we are mixing the catalyst mixture which technically speaking is already regenerated they are going to be mixed in the so-called riser and as you can imagine this is going to rise all the way here to the reactor so this is the reactor here we're going to be separating the products from the catalyst liquid catalyst and so on these are going back to the regenerator and here what's going to happen is essentially we are going to add some fresh mix we're going to have some flue gas spot we are going to recover our catalyst. Here's another example. More importantly, what I want to show you right here is, of course, I told you that these products go to the fractionator, but what is that fractionator? Well, the products will go here and they get split into gases, heavy naphtha, light cycle oil, heavy cycle oil, and heavy oils. Essentially gasolines, diesels, jet fuels, and lubes. Another example right here, we have the reactor overall, reduced pressure officer chamber, okay, the regeneration column, the stripper, and the stream. This black stream, remember that we have initially air and the heavy cut. Then we have the distillation column, which is going to deliver some gases, kerosene, we're going to have heavy and light kerosene fixes, and finally, the slur. The FCC process takes place in a reactor vessel called a riser. A catalyst is mixed with the feedstock and it is vaporized. So since the beginning, it's already interacting the catalyst with the reactants. The mixture is then passed through a dense bed of catalyst particles, which fluidize and crack the hydrocarbons into smaller molecules. As the gas and catalyst particles flow up to the riser, they come into contact with the feedstock, which is injected into the bottom of the riser. The high temperature and pressure causes the feedstock to vaporize and crack into smaller hydrocarbon molecules. So essentially, the reaction is taking place there are precise conditions, high temperatures, relatively high pressures as well, but more importantly, the catalyst. Then at the top of the riser, the gas and hydrocarbon mixture is directed into a separation vessel. In this specific case, the catalyst particles are going to be separated from the gas and hydrocarbons. So technically speaking, our products are in gas phase, but our catalyst is mixed in a liquid slurry uh, phase. What we're going to do is to recover that catalyst the catalyst particles are then recycled back to the bottom of the riser for reuse. 
while the gas and hydrocarbon continue on the other processing units for further refining. So what are the main advantages of the FCC unit? And the very first one will be that we are actually converting heavy crude oil cuts into very valuable lighter hydrocarbon cuts such as gasoline, diesel and jet fuel, more technically speaking, naphtha, kerosene and so, but overall you get the idea. We are recovering fuels that were thought lost. Increase the yield of gasoline and other high value products compared to the other refining processes, offers flexibility to switch between feedstocks and adjust production to meet a changing market demands. Remember that sometimes the requirements for gasolines are higher, so you need to adapt your process for that. But sometimes diesel may increase in the market or sometimes prices of jet fuel decreases, so the refining process needs to be adjusted. Produces less coke and other solid residues compared to the other cracking processes. Remember that coke is essentially all these little black solid residues. Uses a catalyst to speed up the reaction, reducing the energy required and the amount of waste produced. Nonetheless, this process uses extensive energy amounts for the temperature, for the recovery, for the pumping and so on. Can be designed to operate continuously. Typically continuously operation is what you're going to encounter. Reducing downtime for maintenance and improving efficiencies. Saving in operating expenses due to the heat recovery in the reaction regeneration steps. The regenerator is one of the most brilliant things that you may encounter in the refining process. It's going to recover catalyst, it's going to take advantage of the slurry, and it's going to take advantage of the heat transfer that's going on already in the process. Rapid mixing of reactant solids and high heat transfer rates. Easy to control both the heat transfer and fluid flow systems. Now, we need to see the other side of the coin, the disadvantages. It's going to require a constant supply of fresh catalysts, which can be expensive to produce and transport and all the logistics and so on. So as I said before, it does recover some amount of catalyst, but sometimes what you need to do is to add some fresh catalyst. And this is like a cycle. So technically speaking, you are not fully recovering this type of catalyst full 100% of the time. And remember, as with any catalytic reactor, the catalyst can become contaminated with impurities or it can get deactivated, it can get poisoned, which decreases the effectiveness, but more importantly, the lifespan. Hence, that's why we are adding the catalyst stream. Produces large amount of carbon emissions contributing to air pollution and climate change, which is very obvious as stated before, guys, we are using lots of amount, lots of fuel to ensure more fuel production, which is great. It produces large amount of carbon emissions contributing to air pollution and climate change. So as stated before, it requires a lot of pressurization. It requires a lot of heating. And although this is a very profitable process, uh, it still requires a lot of energy and it's something that you need to take into consideration. Now, another aspect to consider in the disadvantages is that it can be sensitive to variations in feedstock quality and composition, which requires a lot of careful monitoring and adjustment. Actually, most processes in refining will require this type of adjustments of temperature because crude oils are not 100% reliable. Sometimes you're going to encounter very high sulfur containing materials. Sometimes you're going to encounter some crude oils that have heavy metals. Sometimes you're going to encounter a crude oil which is very rich in olefins. Sometimes you're going to find very heavy cuts of crude oils overall. The main idea is that it's changing and the processes need to change or adapt to this type of feedstock. The process can be complex and expensive to design and build, therefore requiring significant investment up front. More on disadvantages, back mixing due to particle distribution in dense and dilute phases. So back mixing is something that you definitely don't want to see. It may also encounter some inefficiencies in the contact of solids with the bypassing of solids by bubbles, possible channeling, slugging and attrition of catalyst, possible agglomeration and sintering of fine particles in the dilute phase under certain conditions. So guys, as you can see, this is by far not the easiest process to perform but it is very profitable. You are obtaining lots of products that are very valuable in our society from a feedstock that may not be quite valuable. Hence the importance of the FCC unit. Now, probably wondering which type of catalysts are we going to use in the FCC? And the most common ones are those of alumina silicates, the so-called zeolites, but I also seen some rare earth oxides, which is getting more traction nowadays 
active alumina, silica alumina, clays are also common, but I will say that zeolites are the top catalyst for FCC. Now, let's discuss a little bit more on the catalyst. Remember that during the cracking processes, we are producing lots of organic material. Some of them may be very small and end up depositing in the surface of the catalyst, resulting in the activation. Hence, the recovery of the catalyst is one of the most important aspects here. The regenerated catalyst returns to the reactor after it has been mixed with the fresh fit. Now, one thing that I want to notice is that the activity of the newer catalyst is so intense that much of the cracking takes place in the line returning to the regenerated catalyst to the reactor. So we already discussed on the importance of the catalyst for this specific process, the importance of regeneration and so, but if you want to get a little bit more into the details, here you have some interesting details. For instance, if we were not to have the recovery of the catalyst, this for sure will be a process that wouldn't exist. It's thanks to the regeneration of this process that it is profitable. Also remember that cracking has a lot of these little organic materials that may end up depositing in the surface of the catalyst. Hence, that's why we have to recover it. It's pretty common that the catalyst is getting poisoned. The activity of the newer catalyst is so intense that much of the cracking takes place in the line returning the regenerated catalyst to the reactor. And finally guys, one video that I want to show you is this uh, explanation of catalytic cracking through zeolites inside a FCC. I want you to see the breaking of chains and increase in short chain number. In petroleum refining, for example, long hydrocarbon chains or feed molecules enter the zeolite crystal through the micropores and are channeled to the active. So this is one of the most important aspects. You can see these little channel is so this is one of the most important parts that I want to show you. This is the zeolite and you will see that these are like tunnels. Hence the channeling, uh, you will see that sometimes they get stuck and they lose their activation uh, sites. Sites inside the zeolite crystal. Once in but also once inside, they will be able to crash or to collide between the catalyst itself, making it able to, making it able to split into two molecules. The long hydrocarbon chains are converted or cracked into smaller, more valuable product molecules, such as gasoline, diesel, and other products. But today's zeolites suffer from a fundamental performance limitation due to the size of their micropores. Longer hydrocarbons cannot fit through the small openings of the micropores. And this is one of the most important parts because we cannot operate directly with long or very long chains. And what we need to do is to thermally crack them first, and then we can use catalytic cracking. And for sure, we are using a lot of catalysts or new technologies on catalyst to ensure in the future that we will be able to operate in such conditions. And therefore cannot be cracked into more valuable products. Further, feed molecules that have cracked into valuable products have difficulty escaping the zeolite through the narrow micropores and therefore often overcrack into undesirable byproducts like light gases. This diffusion limitation lowers product yields, process efficiency, and ultimately, proprietary molecular highway technology is applied to the zeolite structure. Highways improve. Nost molecules are large enough so the product molecules exit quickly. And there you have it, guys. This was a video on zeolites, which are the catalyst used mainly in FCC units.